My team's a threat, and you look at the ball. Go! What's good, y'all? Welcome back to another NU battle with the squad. Anyway, we're going against here Pride the Ninja. It's your boy Dip. He's been in my channel, I don't know how many times, different games, yada, 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 but he's always ready to battle. Listen, guys, if you guys want to get on the next series, on the next tier, just go ahead, find me on Discord because I'll be recording most of these battles this upcoming week. You're seeing these battles. So a different tier will be had. Um, anyway, like I said, you can see here, battling Pride the Ninja, he has some threats on his team. I want Alolan Slash to be the focused. Only thing I'm technically really worried about is the Nitto King. I need to get past that Fair Thorn. And of course, you have Tapu. Now, Tapu Water, not too big of a threat. I'm lying. It, it is a pretty big threat. Feeny's going to be a pretty big threat here. Can take out most of my mods. But like I said, those what I'm really worried about. I'm worried about the Nidoking, King, worried about Dragonite, and I'm worried about Tapu. So I'm expecting, I see Shuckle, I see Crobat. I'm expecting some sort of hazards on his end. Um, and so seeing Crobat here, like I said, I, I'm, I'm thinking Toxic Spike's coming out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get my own rocks up, which isn't gonna be an issue at all. Um, I think he was threatened here by this lead. I don't think he knows, you know, because not everybody's used to a Dragon setting rocks. Just not. Dragon usually is not a rock setter. He's a offensive presence. So he goes ahead and he turns out, which I get good damage on, which I'm really happy about. I get really good damage on. So Crobat's going to go out here and he brings in Tapu Fini. Now, when I say this is the unluckiest battle, I truly mean it is the unluckiest battle. I got my rocks up. What's Dredagon's two objectives? Set the rocks, do damage. I'm not gonna do any damage. There's a top of Fini on the field. I'm just gonna go ahead and take this Moon Blast and I'm gonna call it a day. He fucking lives. I live. So I click Glare. Just cause. Like, I didn't care what I clicked. Maybe I should have. But what am I gonna do? Fire Punch thing? So I just clicked Glare. I clicked Glare again. Why? Because I thought I was gonna die. Instead, he takes away my Stealth Rocks. So now I have to stealth rock. But guess what? <laughs> He's gonna kill me. So now I'm gonna go ahead and switch and bring in double scoop. I was like, we're gonna get a loading slash in here real quick because I want my rocks up. I do. I wanna be able to have a loading slash come in and do work. But this is where I should just went ahead and said forget the hazards. Tapu comes in, hits me with the moon blast, does half my health. I'm screwed at this point. I just stay up. Now I believe I should outspeed the Feeny. I just put speed investment into it and vanilla I believe naturally outspeeds Feeny and as you can see not scarfed so I do get the freeze dry off and the freeze dry does damage does a lot of damage but however like I said I'm, I'm gone moon blast out of there but I did get my hail up now I used the turn of it because I didn't die I used the turn of it to go ahead and uh do major damage on this Feeny so right right picking for a load and slash here. Load and slash gonna be able to come in and do some damage. But like I said, there was three things on his team I'm worried about. One's Taku Fini, the other was Dragonite, and the last one is Ferrothorn. Now, I gotta figure out how to get past this Ferrothorn. I do have Houndoom in the back, but Dip is a very smart battler. He's not gonna let Houndoom come in here and just click flamethrower and just Oko is Ferrothorn. And true enough, like his nickname, it really is a thorn in my ass, as Ferrothorn is. So anyway, Ferrothorn is in. I don't really have too many plays against him. I'm not gonna waste my Z Crystal. I thought about it, I thought about it, but I decided no, no need to. I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna sack. I just wanna see what his plan was, and it's a Thunder Wave, which is fine. So now my, my Alolan Sand Slash isn't Thunder Wave because I was gonna kill this thing, which is good. He wanted to get me weakened. I didn't let him weaken the threat. So in a way, it was a misplay earlier um, with, of course, you know, the whole glare. But however, it was able to pay off. I kept DJ Dreddy alive. He came in, take the paralysis, and I got good amount of damage off on this Ferrothorn. Definitely after the Rocky skin or rough skin, Rocky helmet 
uh, damage combo, which is still one of my favorite combos in the game. Run that on uh, Garchomp as well. Well, one of my Garchomps. Anyway, like I said, this Ferrothorn is taking a good amount of damage. Now I can threaten this thing out. So easily, this is a situation where you click, what? What? Nasty plot. Feeny comes in, Feeny doesn't have that much health. I don't care about Feeny. I don't have anything effective against this Feeny. But I've already clicked Nasty Plot. So I'm thinking to myself, you know what? It's make it or break it time. We're just gonna go for it. Why not? Why not? There's nothing I wanted to switch into a Moonblast. And so I might as well get as much damage as possible. Which sucks. After the hail, of course he gets recovery. I'm thinking that I might be able to pull it off. So, why not? Stab, Dark Pulse, let's do it. I hit, it's just not quite enough. Nasty Plot, Stab, Life Orb, not enough. Scald, plenty, down goes Crown Doom. I don't think the crit mattered. I really don't think the crit mattered. It could have, but it's it's a Tapu Fini. Let's, let's be honest here. How Doom is not known for its defenses. And when I keep saying unlucky, bruh, he lived. He lived. I want if he need to be gone, Fini's still around. But like I said, Santa can come in here. Um, And this is my, Santa was my only switch. The reason why is yes, I feared Crobat. Um, I feared anything to be honest with you coming in, but I have hail up. Senek has to come in while the hail is up. Cause he's not gonna be able to do much after. So I was like, I might as well give him a last hurrah. There's no reason of switching or anything else like that. There's nothing There's nothing else you can do for me. So of course I'm gonna outspeed the shuffle here. This is gonna be a super effective hit. I'm like, at least I can do half, I'll be happy. <gasps> I was like, I can do half. And when I say I'm lucky, it's now gonna switch. This is the game that we play people. It's Pokemon. It just doesn't go your way just cause you have a good set plan. I flinched him. I was like, this is going to be a three hit KO after recovery. It's going to be a three hit KO. Second hit. Never mind. I guess I got a good roll. What did, what did I say? Luck. I, I flinched him on the first time. I'm not sure what he went for. Maybe it was some sort of hazard. Maybe it was some sort of status. I don't know. Like I said, I got lucky. So now I'm like, well, there's nothing really else to do except for Earthquake, which he's going to eat up. I'm like, you can paralyze me. It won't matter to me. I'm going to eat that. No problem. So he decided to go for Leech Seed and said, and he missed. So like I said, unlucky. But now it's the game that we play. A, com a complete 180. The flinch, the Leech Seed miss, down goes his Ferrothorn. If he would have Thunder Wave though in that situation, he'd have been in a lot better position. So like I said, I got lucky. Now, I saved my Z move for this bastard here. Um, I didn't know if multi-scale would make a difference with the Z move. I didn't care, he had to go. There was no way I was going to Dragon Knight live with the ice cream crash and he was going to eat it. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to give him a Z move and whatever happens, happens. So all out into this. That's why I didn't use it earlier on the Ferrothorn. I'm so glad I saved it for the situation because I was free to Sub-Zero Slam after this. Like I'm talking about Crobat would have came in. It didn't matter. Nidal King, Sub-Zero Slam was going to hurt. But the most important question was this Dragon Knight. I have to ask him afterwards. I, I can't remember now when recording, but it wasn't max speed. And I don't know why. Even if it wasn't max speed, I mean... Dragonite was pretty slow and I was surprised that I outsped his Dragonite and I was able to kill him. I really was. So he's like, you know what? It's time to return the favor. He goes and hits me with his C move. <laughs> I think he could have been pretty pissed off about that because I would have been pissed off too with how the battle just, just literally changed momentum. So he's going to hit me with the supersonic sky strike. Not many mods look good doing this animation. Crobat, not too bad. Crobat looks like it, it deserves, you know what I'm saying? The wings flapping looks like it deserves to do that. Unfortunately, does absolutely nothing to me, but I think he didn't have anything for him, so he, he just wanted to get some chip damage off. I go ahead and use the Icicle Crash, I land it, down goes Crobat. So it, it's a it's kind of funny here, because without the hail, Sand Slash is still doing a rush. Without Slush Rush, he's still doing work, just outspeeding and damaging mods. Here comes this Nidoking, King, probably going to be Scarfed, probably an old Flamethrower. Probably gonna connect and it's probably gonna kill me. So I didn't want to switch out of that. Sandic, the first time being killed, you know, it was worth it. It was actually, it was, there was nothing else he could have did. He still did a lot of work, even though he wasn't around at the end game like usual. Now, I was surprised he was not scarfed. However, he had the super effect of Thunderbolt, but me being a salt vest and I'm specially built for you know, like bulky defenses, I was able to hit him with the Scald. 
I'm gonna go take down this Nidoking King just with two skulls here. It was a it was a really good battle. Like I said, back and forth. It was a really unlucky match for both of us. Me at the beginning, him at the end. Uh, like I said, I think that Kima's play on not thunder waving, although the sand slash was big, um, because this Nidoking King would have easily been able to come in and handle my Meteor, which was the only mine that I have left. Now, I don't know if I would have been able to Oko him with the arrow, uh, acrobatics or not, but like I said, I could have EQ too, but regardless, it was a good match. See y'all in the next one, but until next time, I'm out of here.